Hello, my loves. You guys are the first ones here. How are you? How are you doing? Am I the asshole for giving away my sister's room to an international student in return for free babysitting? My sister Lainey lived with my family for her first year of university. We never charged her anything. In return, she was supposed to help around the house and babysit for us when we needed. It was maximum, damn, maximum, two nights a week and one day or night on the weekend. It worked great until it didn't. After her first semester, she decided it was unfair and started refusing to do it. Our kids aren't in diapers and they're pretty self-sufficient. We just needed an adult there to make sure they were okay. We talked to my mom and dad about it and they said that she deserved to have a social life. My wife has a lot of family and friends that send their kids to the States for an education. We made arrangements to get one of her cousins to come and stay with us. My sister moved out to go home for the summer. My wife's family's friend moved in. We made sure that we told my parents about it so that we could arrange for my sister to stay in dorms or rent an apartment with friends. They understood. So technically, my understanding is that it wasn't her room. It was never her room. It was the room she was sleeping in. It was never her room. She did not fulfill her end of the, the contract. Contract. So you guys found somebody else willing to do so. I No, you're not the asshole. You're not the asshole. Hmm. Absolutely not. My sister has gone nuts over it. She's upset that we gave away her room that she didn't pay for and that came with free food, internet, utilities, and access to a car if she needed. And all you have to do is watch the kids three days a week and you chose not to do it? Oh, well, you don't get to be mad. She thinks that we're being vindictive. I think we had a deal and her and our parents tried to change it. Maria, the girl that's staying with us, has been great. She tutors the kids and we have her. We have to tell her to stop cleaning because we have a cleaning lady. Maria is getting four nights a week to herself and one weekday, the exact same as my sister. We're helping, we, damn, we're helping her get a license so she can drive the kids if she needs to. We will give her access to the car as well if we're not using them. My sister is upset because she's, she was going to use the money from her summer job as fun money for the year. And now she'll have to use it for housing, transportation, and food. Oh, this is what happens when you bite the hand that feeds you. Literally. Literally. She will also need a job during the school year, so her social life will be impacted. I tried talking to her about it, but she said I was being unfair and cheap. Says the person who was upset that they have to pay their own way through life from now on. That's cray cray. If we pretend that we're actually paying her $25 an hour, that would be 16 hours times 25 times four weeks, $1,600 a month. It, damn, can I, can I do it? Are y'all, are y'all hiring? Are you hiring? Nope, they got Maria, Never mind. Rent, all utilities, food, access to a car for $1,600 is really good in our city. Dorms plus a meal plan will be more than that this fall. See, this is what happens. This is what happens. And honestly, the simple fact that your mom, your dad, and your sister, all three understood what was expected of her before they agreed for her to come makes you not the asshole. Because the moment that she went back on the deal that you guys made together meant that that gave you the right to go and find somebody else to give you the services that you required. This room is reserved for anybody that needs to stay here that is willing to spend three days a week watching our children as we need it. That's what this room is for. Not for someone to live here and have a social life while they're in school. That's not what this room is for. This room is for someone who needs somewhere to stay and can devote three days to watch our children. In return, you have a place to stay, food, utilities, Wi-Fi, and access to a car as long as we're not needing it. Can, can I move in? I don't really like kids, but they'll love me. <laughs> They will love me because what we're going to do is I'll eat all the cookies and the, ca the candy and the snake, the snake, the snacks and shit when y'all going. That's what we're going to do. Like, uh-uh. Hell no. Also, also, my thing is, my thing is, after her first semester, she now refused to babysit. So they were having to support a grown-ass person in their house as well as having to pay for a babysitter whenever they needed. She left for the summer. We still don't got no fucking babysitter. So what were you expecting us to do when we still have to go to work? But now we've got children that are not in diapers, which means they are at home. They're home. School's out. School's out. They're home now. We had to move somebody in. 
you expected us to put Maria the fuck out simply because you want to come and sleep here for free? No. No. <laughs> no, you're bad. What you should have did was watch the kids. That's what you should have did. That's what you should have did. Or told them you didn't want to do it and renegotiated the terms before you moved in. But you don't get to move in and then decide, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Okay. <laughs> don't. We'll move somebody in that will. Yeah, girl, no. Girl, stop. Am I the asshole for refusing to live with my little sister? I wouldn't want to live with one of my sisters either. So I'm going to say no straight off the bat. I wouldn't want to live with my sisters either. At all. None of them. None of them. I-19 female and my sister 18 female will have to move out in under a year because my parents are selling the family home and traveling around the world. My parents decided on this plan of me and her living together. And in doing so, they would only have to pay rent for one place instead of two. They've offered to pay for our rent as an apology for selling the house. What if I don't want to live with her? I spoke to my parents in private and I explained that I wouldn't want to live with my sister and I gave some pretty good reasons why. She's incredibly nasty and won't clean up after herself unless you bring it up. Ugh. If you bring it up often, she starts crying and will make a ton of lame excuses as to why she couldn't do it. The only roommate situation I've ever been in was with my niece and she was 19 and she always talked about, TT, you're always nagging at me. Clean the fucking kitchen and you'll never hear my voice. Cause that was literally the only fight we ever had. You're always nagging at me because I have to tell you to clean up your fucking bloody trash. I gotta tell you to clean the goddamn kitchen. I got to tell you to take your trash out. I'm a nag until you no longer want to hear my motherfucking voice. <laughs> I'm going to nag you so much that when you fuck something up, you're going to hear me. You're going to hear me nagging you while I'm not even fucking here. While I'm not even fucking here. My sister has mentioned previously that when she moves out, she wants her friends over as often as possible and wants to have a place to pregame before the clubs. That'll get old real fast. My sister can't cook very well, so I guarantee that I'll be the one cooking for her. Hell no. Hell, hell no. At least having to help her, no, or at least having to help her whenever she needs help in the kitchen. She doesn't like to share, so I'll be locked up in my room most of the time while she takes over any lounge space that we have. She also doesn't like compromise, and both of our aesthetics are completely different. I know that she would like, she would get her way over me. And I would hate what the apartment looks like. She doesn't like compromise and both of our aesthetics are completely different. I know that she would get her way and I would hate what the apartment looked like. I also would get the smallest room as she would demand the bigger one. My parents told me I was being unfair and wasting a great opportunity for a free place to live. Sometimes free is literally the most expensive thing you'll ever have to do. Just because it's free doesn't mean that it's not expensive. My sister has also found out and is pissed that I'm throwing away free rent. I suggested they pay half of our rents and we live in separate places, but they don't want to agree to that. So my sister is mad at me as I'm 100% the reason that we're losing out on this great deal. No, you're not the asshole. Because you, if you know what is going to happen, you're not wrong for taking the necessary steps to stop it from happening. Like, no, if you don't want it to happen, you don't have to, then you don't have to do it. Absolutely not. No, baby. Am I the asshole for avoiding my daughter-in-law, which resulted in the rest of the family excluding her and when confronted, not fixing it? I don't understand. I don't understand the question. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to be as clear as possible. This started about three weeks ago when my son married my daughter-in-law, Jenny. They got married three weeks ago. Oh, I lied. I lied. They didn't get married three weeks ago. They got married three years ago. I can't read. This started about three years ago when my son married my daughter-in-law, Jenny. She's very opinionated and doesn't handle any slight well. She claims it's due to growing up and having to be very loud in order to have someone pay attention to her. She was in a family of all boys and during any issue, she goes 100%. This is a problem. I don't believe Jenny. 
you were the only girl in a house of boys i don't believe you like i believe she was the only girl in a house of boys but that's not a reason for you to be the way you are no this is the problem anytime that she has a small issue she will escalate it very quickly this has caused about half of our outings to be ruined it's like she thinks everyone is out to get her and a small slight will set her off she can never just keep her mouth shut everything needs a reaction from her a few examples a mix-up at starbucks for her drink a waiter seemed impatient someone pushed past her these situations at most need a polite request to fix like her drink or just ignore it instead she's just a dick it's an awful feeling to leave and know that i shouldn't step back in that place for at least six months oh hell no i would have been cut her the fuck off because what you're not gonna do is fucking embarrass me because as soon as you were done snapping on the waiter i don't want the fuck off on you so do you feel better big man you just yelled at somebody while they were at work for making a fucking mistake do you feel better miss perfect <laughs> would have immediately embarrassed her ass standing right the fuck there in starbucks right the fuck there in starbucks because bitch calm the fuck down calm down it's not that big of a fucking deal if it's that bad make your own fucking coffee make your own fucking coffee we're not doing that hell no would have embarrassed her because you what you're not gonna do is stop me from going somewhere because i'm embarrassed by the way you behaved absolutely not hell no i tried to talk to her about the issue but it didn't go well i tried to talk to my son and nothing happened on that front so i stopped going to small family events that she was invited to period i still go to the big ones like holidays my life has been better because of it. People noticed and when asked, I told them the truth. Over time, people stopped inviting her <laughs> or stopped going to events. She invited people to go to the city for the 4th of July. Everyone turned her down. She asked around and it came back to me. Those people suck. Everybody that blamed it on you fucking suck. Nobody took accountability for their own fucking feelings because... Her asking around, why aren't you guys coming, should not have gotten back to OP. Unless somebody blamed it on OP. The people that you're around fucking suck. They threw you under the bus. 100%. Yes, Kiki. They 100% threw her under the bus. Absolutely. Uh-uh. I got a call from my son. <laughs> I got a call from my son telling me to fix this. That I'm a huge bully and I caused this. That his wife has been upset since and got in a few arguments with family members. I told him no. I told him a while ago that her behavior was horrible. This isn't my problem. He called me some lovely names and now I'm doubting myself. Absolutely not. So you mean to tell me you told her you blowing up at simple shit is not something I want to be around. Hey son, your wife seems to be a bit fucking emotional blowing up at simple shit and it makes me not want to be around. You guys should work on that. Neither one of you motherfuckers decide to take any action. So I fixed it myself. I don't want to be around somebody that's going to get me kicked out of every store we walk into today. So I'm going to go by myself. If you don't want people to think you're a shit person, don't do shit things. Period. Point blank. You ask people to come and hang out with you. Nobody wants to be around you because of how you fucking throw tantrums. And this isn't even just in places of business. This is anybody that does anything to her. These probably the very same people that she has kicked, that she has um, invited to kick it with her for 4th of July. I'm pretty sure amongst those people, there's a few of her fucking victims in there and she's upset she's upset that nobody wants to come she argued with family members because they don't want to be around her because of her actions nope and then you want me to fix it all right tell her to come over here grab the back of the chair and give me my belt because i'm gonna beat your ass like your mama need to or like she should have because blowing up and screaming at people is not accepted and we are not going to deal with that because you want me to fix it i'm gonna whoop her ass Am I the asshole for not babysitting my ex's children? No. Unless your ex's children are your children? <laughs> no. Because I've heard bitches be like, you know, I can't date niggas that got kids. And he'd be like, bitch, we got the same kid. Unless your ex's kids are your kids, you're not the asshole. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're not the asshole. 
Okay, see, and then she starts off with, I share a 12-year-old son with my ex. <laughs> we broke up amicably when he was three months old. We got along fine just after. We were both young and we never really worked together. And I have zero animosity towards her for the end of our relationship. We co-parented our son well, well over the last 12 years. But for three or four years now, we've had some issues. Following our breakup, my ex had five other children by five different men and to the best of my knowledge not one of those men is involved in the life of their child my ex is raising her other five kids alone alone without help and as as of two years ago she lives in a different city and i have custody of our son with her getting monthly visitation and more time in the summer i used to see my ex's kids occasionally and try to be kind to them but the more kids she had the more she would ask me for help no nope. I'm helping you to the fullest extent when it comes to my child. It's not my job. It's not my job. She would ask me for help with them and I put a boundary down because I didn't want to encourage her to keep having more children and rely on me for financial or child care assistance. It started with her wanting money for her kid's birthdays or a medical appointment and then it turned into requests for me to take the kids overnight or for me to babysit for her. Oh, girl. Girl. She was made homeless two years ago after her former landlord sold the house that she was renting and the new the new owner didn't intend to continue renting it out. She left it too late to make other plans. She left it to too late to make other plans. And when she was made homeless, I was awarded temporary custody of our child. She turned it turned into full custody once she moved to a different city. Now my ex is asking me to babysit her kids during the day now that school is out. And I told her no. My reasons are that you fucking said no. That's it. You don't need to explain. Sir, I believe you. My reasons are as follows. Oh, hell no. It's a three hour drive from her to me. And I don't believe she's going to make that drive to and from here every day to pick up the kids, which means I would end up with her kids overnight. She also expects this for free, which is another reason. And finally, oh shit, she's pregnant again. So doing this now only adds to the concern about her leaning on me to be a father to the kids she had with other men. My thing is, ma'am, if you don't have no money, why are you fucking? You know what the fuck don't happen? Her majesty don't drip when ain't no money in the bank account. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It doesn't. It don't because I'm stressed. I am stressed. I can't relax. <laughs> If we ain't got no money, what are we celebrating? <laughs> like, no, this ain't going to take away the stress, sir. No, hell no. Mm -mm. When I said no, we had a fight over this. And she told me to think of it as showing my son how to be a kind and caring person and giving her kids the chance to see him more than they do. I don't give a fuck about none of that. Let my son grow up to be an asshole because I didn't allow his mama to treat me like a pushover. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Uh, uh And your kids not seeing their brother is your problem because you ended up homeless and you lost custody to me. It seems like a whole lot of you problems going on that you want me to fix. Nah, baby. No, 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 no. She told me that I need to man up and help her as the father of her first kid. And she laid a huge guilt trip on me, which I think has made me question my no even more now. Am I the asshole? Did she tell this to her other five baby daddies? You need to man up. Me, the only motherfucking man in your life taking care of his kids? Oh, okay. <laughs> you need to man up. Man, you are having the wrong conversation with the wrong man. With the wrong baby daddy. The wrong one. Ma'am, uh-uh. I, 30 female, just heard a phone notification in my bathroom while showering alone. Should I ask my fiance, 33 male, about it? Nope. Pack your shit and leave. Let me be in the shower by myself. And I know it's not my phone that go off. That means you hiding shit. I'm leaving because I don't know what the fuck you're hiding and I don't want to find out. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. So my fiance and I have been together for four years, engaged for one. 
I was taking a relaxing bath this evening to enjoy the silence and let the bathroom fan damn to enjoy the silence and just let the bathroom fan drown out all the outside noise. My phone was on silent as well. I wasn't wearing earbuds. I was deep in a meditative state when I'm jarred out by a phone text or email notification sound. It was clear as day coming from inside the bathroom. I got up immediately like, what the fuck? I checked my phone even though I knew it was on silent and there were no notifications. So I was kind of worried at this point and I just felt a sinking feeling in my stomach. <gasps> Excuse me. So I got dressed and I looked through every crevice, box, cabinet, drawer, and plumbing fixture in the bathroom to find nothing. I know for a fact that I didn't just hear it in my brain. It was a distinct Android where she she typed out the word, the sound. Wait, wait, wait. I don't have an Android, so I don't know what that means. Boo, 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 boo. Boo, 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 boo. <laughs> is that what it sounds like because i don't have an android so i don't know but she literally boo 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 <laughs> boo 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 <laughs> i'm sorry that's it all right all right all right we got it okay we don't even have any androids before anyone asks yes i checked my carbon monoxide levels they're fine i have no mental illnesses my question is, what do I do? Do I even bring this up to my fiance? I sound crazy and I don't want to be accusatory, but my first thought was a second phone hidden by him in the bathroom. I would have removed the goddamn toilet. I'm taking the light fixture down. Fuck it. The bathtub's got to come out. The ba baby would come home to the bathtub at the fucking front door. And <laughs> cause, no, hell no. Mm -mm. Babe, what do you do when I heard shit? There's something in here. Uh-uh. No, we just gonna have to rebuild the fucking bathroom after I find it. Because it could have been buried under the tile. Fuck all of that. Hell no. Mm -mm. My, my question is, what do I do? Do I even bring this up to my fiance? I sound crazy and I don't want to be accusatory. But my first thought was a second phone hidden by him in the bathroom. I couldn't imagine he would ever cheat. But you can never be too vigilant when something random and unexpected like this happens. Should I just wait and see if it happens again? I'm not going to lie. I'm a little paranoid and I've been convincing myself I manifested the noise, but I know in my gut it was real. Where else would I even look? The one thing I'm not going to do is convince myself that I, that I didn't see what the fuck I saw. Nope. I will be labeled crazy in the eyes of everyone, but bitch, I know what I heard. I know what I heard. Oh, we have an update. My first post didn't get a ton of activity, but I was made to feel like a crazy person by most people. That's because people are fucking crazy and they would rather somebody else doubt their relationship than them focus on the fact that they are doubting their entire relationship. So y'all make toes. Why are you on my toes, Miss Man? So that's why they try to make you feel, make you feel crazy. <laughs> Whoops. Anyways. I didn't talk to my fiance about it because I found the phone before he got home. Yes, I tore the bathroom apart like a madman, but this time I checked behind the toilet tank between the wall. Girl, that should have been the first place. We have about a two inch gap and mounted to the back of the toilet tank was one of those $1 Timu holder things that you peel off and stick on something to hold items. The phone was placed inside of that sticky mounted thing Definitely not my phone. And obviously it was meticulously placed there. Your fiance, fiance was ready for you to find that. Cause he went through all of that effort and didn't turn the phone off. He was ready for you to find it. He was ready for you to find it. <laughs> well, my fiance and I broke up. The password was the same as his computer that we share. So I unlocked it while trying to stifle an anxiety attack. I found Snapchat conversations with at least three different women. The notification sound I heard lined up with the most recent snap sent to him. Uh, okay, with a woman's bare for JJ asking when he can come and stuff it again. You bitches have no shame. One thing I'm not going to do is send my cooter cat through Snapchat. Y'all do know there's a fucking server that saves everything. Correct? I don't give a fuck how much they tell you. It's not. 
There is a server that saves every fucking thing. How you think people get caught committing crimes that they posted on their fucking Snapchat story? It's not always because somebody saved it and told on them. Hell, you bitches have no shame. You bitches have no shame. Whoopsie. Whoopsie. Okay. In a rage, I smashed the phone and texted my fiance to come home immediately. He came home and already looked pale like he knew. Yeah, because they know. I asked him how fucking long this was going on and he refused to answer anything. I told him to pack his shit and leave. As he walks out with his backpack, I heard him mutter. I knew I forgot to silence it. <clears throat> So yeah, it wasn't crazy. I actually heard it. I wasn't crazy. <coughs> oh shit. Oh shit. That scared the shit out of me. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so yeah, I wasn't crazy. I actually heard a notification and he was fucking cheating. Damn it. <coughs> <coughs> shit. Excuse me. Now my whole world is upside down and I don't know where to go from here. I just can't believe this. I fell asleep crying and woke up in a daze, feeling like everything was normal until I remembered. So not a very fun update. Sorry. That's so sad. All right. Just, am I the asshole for calling out my friends over their behavior at my wedding dress appointment? No, because you are a grown ass person. If you act up, I'm gonna let you know. Bitch, grow up. Grow up. I, 25 female, am getting married to my fiance, 27 male, next year. My best friend, A, 25 female, is, a, is the maid of honor. And my friend, B, 24 female, is a bridesmaid, along with my sister and my fiance's sister. I had a private wedding dress try on at a really lovely store close to where I live. My mother, sister, mother-in-law, sister-in-law, maid of honor and bridesmaid were present for this try on as i was allowed six guests and i wanted them all to be involved i've dreamed of trying on wedding dresses for a long time and i wanted a nice moment with the people close to me instead i was left feeling quite humiliated embarrassed and upset after the appointment i did end up choosing and buying a dress both my maid of honor a and bridesmaid b spent the entirety of the appointment where i tried on different dresses and showed everyone whispering to each other and laughing and offering no type of feedback or even a positive comment i would have asked them to leave why are you here why are you here why are you here i sound like fucking angelina jolie from the movie wanted why are you here why are you here i would have asked them to leave my special day is about me it's about me I'm going to put you out at any point. If you irritate or vex me, you got to go. You have to go. These are the people that are closest to her. You got to go. You can't be here. Absolutely the fuck not. They didn't give a positive, positive comment or compliment to a single wedding dress that I tried on. Even when I found the dress of my dreams that everyone ended up loving too, my mom cried. <laughs> that's beautiful they didn't say a single thing even when i asked them if they liked the dress they couldn't even give me a compliment these girls are not your friend um am i the asshole for not paying for my co-workers lunch did you mess up his lunch this is genuinely the dumbest am i the asshole that i've ever made but here we are <laughs> i'm a first responder and i was riding alone Wait, I was riding along with another ship for training purposes. The first day we drive through Chick-fil-A, I ordered a small mac and cheese and in our area, that's about $4. He ordered a whole meal. When we got to the window, they gave us 50% off making mine $2. The guy that I was riding with said, don't worry, I'll cover for you. Cool, thank you for covering my $2, I appreciate it. Second day, we went to a local bistro. No, no, you're not the asshole. I know where this is going, bitch. $20 and $30 versus my $4 or my $2 are not comparable. Hell no. The next day, we went to a local bistro that's decently pricey. I ordered a salad and it was about $10. His meal totaled out to just over 20 
when we went to the register to pay, he told them, she's going to cover mine now, uh, uh, while pointing at me. <laughs> to say that I was appalled is an understatement. But I'm also no punk. I calmly stated, $2 does not constitute 22, period, or whatever the hell the total was. If you'd like me to give you $2 to cover my small side that I ordered yesterday, I will absolutely do that, but I will not be paying for your meal. And I handed my card to the cashier. He paid for his meal and we went outside where he refused to let me get into the vehicle. Okay. He committed to arguing and causing a scene in the parking lot. He told me that I'm no longer allowed to ride with him, so I called for a supervisor. Once the supervisor arrived, he told me that he covered my lunch yesterday and I refused to extend the same courtesy. Oh, snitch bitch, because you're lying. <laughs> he said that I refused to extend the same courtesy and that I embarrassed him and caused a scene. He was no longer comfortable riding with me. I explained my side to the supervisor and I apologized because this is literally so ridiculous. The supervisor essentially said that I was wrong because I should have just been respectful and paid for him like he did to me. That man knew exactly what he was doing. <laughs> At this point, I was pissed and I told him this sounds like extortion and that I wasn't going to be taking advantage of. I told them that $2 is a lot different than $22. We're first responders. We don't make a lot of money. I continued to say if he wanted me to buy him a drink from the gas station or give him $2, I had absolutely no problem with doing that. But I wasn't going to be bullied into covering his meal because he covered mine. I ended up riding with someone else because obviously riding with him is no longer an option. The person I switched to said I was wrong and I should have just paid for his meal. I don't think I'm wrong here. Had I known the previous day that I would have been expected to pay for his expensive meal after he paid $2 for my mac and cheese, stop it, <laughs> I would have never let him cover me. I feel like since he put me on the spot, me putting him on the spot in return was only fair. I don't feel like I caused a scene. I wasn't the one who argued and refused to unlock the doors, but now everyone is saying that I'm not a team player and I embarrassed him as well as our place of work. Am I wrong here? Am I the asshole? Girl, you need to find somewhere else to work because those people are not trustworthy. So because you spent $2 on me, I'm now indebted to you for $22 for an expensive ass meal. Okay, if you broke, just say that. If you're broke, just say that because there's no way in hell you got to find somewhere else to work because everybody's telling me that I'm wrong. You're wrong. You should have just paid for it. What if I didn't have $22 fucking dollars for his meal? What if I did not have $22 for someone else to eat? There's a reason why baby girl spent $4 the day before and $10 today because she don't have $30, $40 to spend on a meal, let alone not a meal for her. Am I the asshole for leaving everything to my bio children and nothing to my stepchildren? I, 51 female, have been battling cancer since I was 28. It came back three times, and now I'm at the point in my life where I'm comfortably living with cancer. I didn't know there was a thing. I have two daughters in their 20s with children, one being widowed. <gasps> Excuse me. I remarried my... I remarried two years ago to a man that has four children. One is still living at, at home with us. He's 19. It's been weighing heavy on my mind to make sure everything is in order in case of the worst. And I told my husband I had planned to leave everything to my children and grandchildren. I wanted to make sure they were set. He got upset and said that that was horrible because I married a man knowing he had children. You mean your grown ass adult ass children? He got upset and said that I was horrible because I married a man knowing he had children, that what I was doing was horrible and would make them feel unloved. We've been married for two years. Your youngest is 19. That means for 17 years, you guys live perfectly fine without me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your grown ass fucking kids that are even older have lived even longer without me. I'm not their mom. I am their dad's wife. I owe them nothing. I have children that I have to take care of. My children, because if you were to die, I know good and fucking well, you wouldn't leave shit to my kids. Get the fuck out of here. This man married her because she had cancer and he thought she was going to die and leave everything to him and his kids. Hell no. 
I love my stepchildren like my own, but one of my daughters are a 29 year old widow with three young children. My husband is an oral surgeon. He makes great money. And what he chooses to do with it after he passes is up to him. So his kids are getting an inheritance. He just thinks they're entitled to her money too. He's been very upset about this and hasn't been talking to me. He even told his eldest stepdaughter, who's also had many tragedies in her life. She brought it up when she stopped by the house and she was also upset about this. Could you imagine being upset at someone who is sick because they're not going to leave you stuff when they die? You bitches have a lot of fucking nerve. The secondhand embarrassment that I'm feeling could like, how do you even manage the courage to go and be mad at somebody else for what the fuck they're doing with their money? Neither of these two motherfuckers who are angry were around when this lady made her money. They were not around when the money was being fucking made because they've only been married for two years. I know good and fucking well she ain't make that much money in two years that she's leaving her kids an inheritance. No, this money has been here and they feel entitled to it. Bitch, your dad is a surgeon. All these tragedies going on in your life, your daddy could help you. And if he can't, if he can't, it's not meant for you to have. That's it and that's all. It's not meant for you to have. I like it literally. It never ceases to amaze me how many people don't think that way. You want something. And if you cannot afford to get it yourself, it is not meant for you to have. That's it. That's all. Not you mad as fuck. I've been going through a lot of things and you're going to leave money to your daughter that's going through a lot of things. Yeah, I am because that's my baby. That's my baby. I made the choice to bring my daughter into this fucking world. So I'm going to take care of her in any and every fucking way that I can when I'm no longer here. When I'm no longer here, I'm going to take care of my baby. What I'm not going to do is argue with somebody about my motherfucking money when he spends his money on what the fuck he wants. No, hell no. Absolutely the hell not. I wish Mark the fuck would. I wish he would come over here mad at me. Mm -mm. Hell no. Mm -mm. I don't have much to offer. Not like my husband, but... I don't see it as a big deal. I don't want their feelings hurt. And my husband says that it's a principle that I married a man with children. Am I the asshole? Ask him how much he's leaving to your children. I bet that'll silence this whole argument down real fast. Ask him, how much are you? Let me see your will. How much are you planning to leave to my children? You married a woman that you knew had kids. How much did you help my daughter when her husband passed away, when the father to her three young children left her widowed? How much money did you give to my, my children? How much are you planning to give to my children? You married a woman with children. That's a sucky move if you're not leaving them anything. <laughs> I can do this all goddamn day. Mm-hmm. It just, I'm just so upset that you're not going to leave me the money that you worked hard for. Well, let me go on and buy you a cape so you can be super mad. The fuck? I don't care. I don't fucking care. Be mad, bitch. Be extra mad. I need you to call people and get them on your side so y'all can be collectively mad. <laughs> Am I the asshole for telling my wife I didn't enjoy the birthday surprise that she planned for me? Any of these stink? My 36 male wife, 37 female, said she would plan something for us to do for my birthday. She asked if there was anything I wanted to do, and I told her no. At 36, I don't have any expectations when it comes to my birthday. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've been together for 20 years, married for seven. We have three kids under six, so planning activities can be a bit tricky. Traveling is tough, and staying in un baby my wife plans something packs an overnight suitcase for everyone and then we all load up our van we drove an hour and 45 minutes to a small town we took a long rocky narrow road to a tiny cabin airbnb in a remote heavily wooded area that sounds like the beginning to every scary movie i've ever seen it's a single room with a galley kitchen one bed and a pull-out couch it's cramped with three kids there's not much to do, no walking trails, and nowhere to drive except back on, that, back on that awful road. 
I'm asked to drive back to get dinner from a nearby bar. <laughs> I know it is, baby just came from outside. I'm surprised and not in a good way. I don't say anything bad about the property, but ow, ow, I can't hide my feelings and she can tell that I'm not really a fan. We unpacked, walked around, and she had some gifts for me to open in front of the kids. We have a cake. We spend four or five hours then trying to pass the time. The highlight was sneaking in a quickie in the outdoor bathtub. Okay. After that, we go through a tire the tiresome routine of getting all of the kids ready to sleep. It was extra hard in this tiny cabin. By the way, I had to sleep on an air mattress because our youngest co-sleeps and needs mom at night. What, well, sir? What part of this was for you? Because that's that's what I want to know. What what happened? <laughs> what is what's, what what happened? Because it don't seem like you're enjoying any of this at all. Next time, maybe we should make a suggestion. Just say you'd rather stay home if you would just rather stay home. We wake up early because the cabin has no curtains. My wife told me that, that we're going to go do a 5K bubble and color run, run. How far is 5K? That's too much. I smiled and just said, okay, let's do it. I didn't want to sound disappointed, but probably I, fa I probably failed to hide it. I'm not a runner. I've never said that I wanted to run, but whatever. About three miles, that's too much for me. I don't even want to walk. <clears throat> I'm not a runner. Never said I wanted to run, but whatever. Let's try it. We pack up and we headed to the event. It's a small, cheap event on a hot day. Our two youngest did not want to do this, but we started the race anyway. You did a three-mile race with three children? One who's a toddler that still co-sleeps? That's fun. That's fun. <laughs> that That's fun. Our youngest didn't want to do this, but we started the race anyway. Our oldest took off, causing us to lose him twice. I finally tried to catch up, and I ended up sweaty, winded, and with aching knees. Not fun. After my wife finishes with our other two kids, we walked around a small street fair, and we let the kids play. That's fine, but I was ready to rest. My wife tells me we're supposed to meet friends at the beach later, so we have a two-hour drive back, hoping the kids would take a nap in the car. I took a nap, feeling quiet and not really being in a good mood. We got to the beach and two of our kids started melting down. I bet. I fucking bet. I was done with the day and I would have preferred to be home. Eventually they chill out and we find some shade and all is fine. When we got home, it was a mad dash to get the kids showered in bed and everything while I unpacked, cleaned the car and the house. My wife asked me what was wrong and I told her that I appreciate her effort, but I didn't feel like she planned it with me in mind. I don't like running. I want comfort when traveling with the kids and it was exhausting. It was a lot of effort for something that wasn't enjoyable. She flips out, devastated that I didn't enjoy it and angry at me for not just being grateful somebody planned something for me. I don't think you're the asshole, not at all. I would not have wanted to go on a 5K run and then go to the beach two hours after that. Like after you're done with the, the, okay, after you're done with the run, you go walk around the fair. When you leave the fair, you get in the car to drive two hours to the beach and then hang out at the beach. After that, it's a mad dash back home. And I'm terrible because this was my birthday weekend. Hi, baby. It was my birthday weekend and I enjoyed none of it. That's annoying. That's fucking annoying. You know what? I read a Reddit story a while ago. I didn't share it, but I read it and it was basically a man was asking if he was the asshole for not enjoying the gift that his wife gave him for his birth. It was either, I think it was his birthday because Father's Day isn't here yet for his birthday. So basically she bought him a grill for his birthday and then he ended up having to cancel his golf day with his friends just so that he could stay home and uh, get everything together to cook for her and her friends her and her friends were coming over and she bought him something and then he had to cancel what he wanted to do to make sure that everything was ready for what she did and it's like bro you're not the fucking asshole at all because a gift is supposed to be something that you bought with me in mind not something that we can both enjoy not something that you're going to enjoy no a gift is something that's supposed to be bought for me for me that means if no one else in the fucking house enjoys it except me that's fine what did i get on my shirt 
Oh, it's water. No one else in the house enjoys it except me. That's fine. Like, oh, hell no. Am I the asshole for telling my mother she was a pathetic parent and she isn't invited to my wedding? Damn. I think that is my favorite part about Am I the Assholes? When we come across stories of kids who are finally standing on their own two feet and standing up for themselves. That is my favorite part about coming across Reddit stories. Because even though the bottom line question is, was I wrong for saying A, B, and C? But it's like, baby, after what you just explained to me that happened, I'm so fucking proud of you. I am so fucking proud of you. That's my favorite part. Hi, mama, of these stories. Hi, mommy. All right. I'm 26. I'm getting married at the end of the year. When I was a kid, my dad divorced my mom. She was a stay-at-home, damn, a stay-at-home mom at the time. In short, he felt like she was lazy and spending all of his money. At the time, I didn't see it, and I was quite angry at him. He had us for weekends, and the rest was with my mom. She had to find a job and work long shifts. That would be fine if she didn't forget about us. She would get home and not help us with homework or anything. It was my job to clean everything and keep my younger brother in line. It sucked. When I was a teenager, I moved in with my dad, and my life got so much better. Funny enough, since I went full-time and my brother soon joined, she had to start paying child support. She was pissed about that and basically ad- and, damn, basically stopped talking to us. Anyways, my invites for my wedding went out. One went to my aunt, and I believe she mentioned it to my mother. I got a call asking about her invitation. I told her that she wasn't invited, and this started an argument. I told her she was a pathetic parent, and she called me heartless. Edit. I have a few comments on this. My mom did not take care of us. She paid the bills, but did nothing else. I was the one that made the home clean, took care of my brother and cooked food. I had to go buy groceries with my dad's money starting when I was 10 so that we would have a hot meal that wasn't junk food. He also went back for custody and got rewarded an extra day, but overall it wasn't allowed. I wasn't allowed to leave until I was old enough to force it with the court. That's terrible. And I know these comments come from people basically acting like she's indebted to her mom because her mom took care of her. Like that's, I know that's where these comments are coming from. And that's absolutely disgusting because people act like parents are not in, I mean, entitled, obligated to take care of their children. But she fed and clothed you. Her fucking job as a parent. That is a parent. Like I seen a, um, I seen a video earlier today and it stated that Quentin Tarantino has never given his mother any of his money. And bro's net worth was upwards of $120 million. And it stated that he never gave her any of his money because when he was younger, she belittled and talked bad about his career being a writer and the screen rights and stuff that he would do. She would always tell him like, oh, your little screenplay. She never... Su- She's ready to go downstairs. Can you guys tell? (laughs) His mother never supported him. Never supported him. And he made the decision that since you did not support me, you will not reap the benefits of all of my hard work. Indica, we talked about this. (laughs) But basically, (laughs) in the comment section, people were basically stating that, well, she's your mother. You need to forgive her and let it go. And it's like, absolutely not. I am not going to forgive you for being disrespectful to me my entire life. And the person was basically like, well, she fed him and she clothed him and she took care of him. All the things that she literally signed herself up to do when she decided to keep and birth her baby. Is it good? Is it as good for you as it is for me? Is it? I'll take that as a yes. I'll take it as a yes, Buki. But yeah. And like it said that he only broke that rule for himself one time, one time in all the time he's been making money. He has only helped her out financially one time. And it wasn't even a big financial thing one time. And I absolutely love it because if you're not going to be there for me when I'm doing bad and I'm just starting out and I'm trying my best, you don't get to reap the benefits like no, hell no. Uh -uh. I will honor my mother and father when they fucking honor me. Honor, respect, and love the child you chose to bring into this fucking world. 
<laughs> like, hell no. Hell no. You guys, I read all 12 stories. It's all the 12 stories. Let me stop before somebody feelings get hurt. I love you all. Thank you for coming, being here. Thank you for all of you guys that donated. You guys are helping me help other people. You're you're amazing. Don't forget that. We'll probably be back. Either way, I'll be here. See you guys later. Take care.